There is a voice inside your head and that voice is there because you are unconsciously cushioning yourself from reality. To master this voice, you must pay attention not to the voice that speaks, but to you that listens. Everyone has a voice that speaks in their head. It is the voice that's reading this out to you right now even though your lips aren't moving. It's the voice that's saying, a voice in my head? Do I really have a voice in my head? Yes, there it is. It is the voice of your thoughts. It speaks in your head before words ever come out of your mouth and it speaks in your head even when words don't come out of your mouth. It is a narrator when you walk down the street and notice things, one, like, oh, there's a dog at a fire hydrant. Wait, why does that dog look so much like Mrs. James's Labrador? Ah, that's because it is Mrs. James's Labrador. The trees are beginning to brown, fall is approaching. I remember last fall, I spent so much time with Janet, I wonder how Janet is doing. If you notice, it doesn't exactly have a stable direction of speech and it can and will jump topics without missing a beat. It even has the ability to argue with itself, did you buy new batteries for the smoke alarm? No, we don't need new batteries. What do you mean we don't need new batteries? We don't. Yes we do, do you not remember the last time and how you nearly burnt the house down because you didn't change the batteries in time? Oh, shut up, you don't have the money for batteries. Oh, but you have money for tacos? Yep, it can get pretty wild in there considering the voice is talking to the voice, and the voice is inside you. It would be pretty awkward if everything the voice said came out of your mouth. Not only would you have hurt many people's feelings, and gotten fired a few hundred times, you would look absolutely crazy just walking on the street and talking. The inner voice might seem harmless, or even helpful sometimes, but it is not. Think about it this way. If you had a best friend who shadowed you 24-7, never for one second shutting up, wouldn't you get tired? You would want a break, some quiet. It's the exact same issue here. The voice is in your head, and it won't be quiet. This voice is there because unconsciously, you want it to be. It acts as a cushion for you because reality is too real. A tree in the park is existing on its own and when you come in contact with it, in order to feel some sort of control, the voice notes it, and the voice judges it, and forms some fake connection with the tree. When that happens what you are doing is forming a personalized view of your surroundings and existing there instead. This, however, is not a good thing. The voice is keeping you from experiencing the world in its totality. The voice also has the ability to ruin good things for you by constantly second-guessing your decisions and whining every chance it gets, and can end up making you miserable. I told you not to wear this dress on this date. You look like a total whale. I bet he's spent so much time just looking at the menu so he doesn't have to look at you. The voice can be incredibly mean, but you listen to it because it's in your head and so you feel you owe it attention. To break free from this, take out the voice and alienate it from yourself. Make it an entity outside of your body. Imagine it as a person sitting beside you. Doing this, not only would you want to get away from it, you would learn to tune it out. The voice is always concerned with external forces. It comments and complains in a bid to control the external, but this is impossible. The only thing you can control is what is inside. In order to master the voice, you have to look within when it complains. You are not the voice, it is only a part of you, so you must look within whenever it complains, try to find the part of you that is complaining. The part that has a problem with what it sees or hears. When you find that part, try to figure out why it is so upset. Observe yourself and you will find the key to mastering the voice. The discovery of who you are is the key to inner freedom and finding your lucid self and gaining control over your body and mind. The discovery of who you are is one of the most important steps to inner freedom, according to Yogi Master Ramana Maharshi. You will find that answering the question of who you are is more complicated than you would expect. Who you are is not your name, it's not your age, weight or skin color, it is not your experiences or your achievements. It is not even your thoughts unlike the famous René Descartes quote of, I think therefore I am. The definition of thinking is, using the mind to form thoughts. Who then is using the mind? That is you. When you meditate, your thoughts stop, you experience peace. Obviously then, you are not the thoughts in your mind. You are not anything that has to do with the outside world, you are also not your emotions or your thoughts, you are only aware of those. Who then are you? You are the consciousness that is in your body, thinking thoughts, and experiencing emotions in life. To attain inner freedom you must find the center of your consciousness within you and take your seat there. 
That is where the world would open up to you and where you would find your lucid self. What does it mean to be lucid? Lucidity is simply awareness. Being lucid means that you are in the know. As your lucid self, you are aware of everything. When a thought crosses your mind you no longer get lost in it, you understand that you are the one thinking the thought. Lucidity means that you have control over your focus. You are no longer getting lost in external factors, you are no longer getting lost within yourself, so in that place it is easy to control your body and your mind, and do miraculous things. Yoga for example practices such focus to move your body into all those insane positions and the higher you go in yoga the more intense calisthenics, the closer you have to be to your lucid self. Yoga masters search ceaselessly for that center, even at their level of focus. In that center, who knows? You might be able to levitate. On your search, like Ramana Maharshi, continue to ask yourself, who am I? You will realize that the answer to that question is you. It might seem redundant, but there is no intellectual answer. You are who you are. To be truly free, you must let go and not allow yourself to be stopped by fear, you must learn to accept change in order to grow. Life is more unpredictable than anything man has ever known. It will throw things at you that you were not prepared for, and at points have you asking what is going on. However, it is up to you to either grow from these experiences or allow yourself to be swallowed by fear. Man's problem is the need to assert control. Control over things that cannot be controlled. Instead of focusing on controlling the inner self which will lead to the control of the world around him, man makes feeble attempts to fight the external. A part of this need to control is fear. Fear is, in fact, afraid of itself and as such stimulates you to try to control everything, so that you don't feel fear. This might sound like a good thing because after all, one should avoid feeling scared, anything that makes you scared is bad. Is flying in a plane bad though? What about bungee jumping? These make people scared but they are not bad. It is the same with the world and the things life throws at you. If you allow fear to take over it would become a war all your life. You against life, you against your emotions, you against everyone and everything, since you believe everything different from what comforts you is a monster in the dark that's out to get you. Feeling fear like this will keep you from attaining freedom and accepting change. Growth involves change. So if you fear change, you will never grow. With fear, the way to process conflict is to protect yourself, this means to avoid what causes the fear, which is the conflict. However, you can only grow by experiencing said conflict. Imagine this conflict as a thorn in your arm. It restricts the use of your arm, disrupts your sleep and much more, why? Anything that touches it, even just a little bit hurts you. There are two ways to deal with this problem. The first is to make sure nothing touches the thorn, restricting yourself and avoiding everything that could touch the thorn to avoid feeling pain. The second is to take out the thorn and feel the pain once, and never again. In the first option, you center your whole life around the thorn and your fear of the pain it can cause you. It would control where you can go, your relationships, what you can do. On the other hand, when you remove the thorn you feel pain once but can do what you want afterward, without the thorn influencing your choices. It seems quite obvious that it's best to remove the thorn, isn't it? Yes, you should indeed face that conflict and remove the thorn. When you try to protect yourself and stay where is comfortable, you will never grow. You would be unable to experience life in its totality. You should let go of fear and embrace change when it comes. The secret of existence is actually very simple, such that you might overlook it if you are not careful and miss the sight of God. The height of spiritual understanding and inner freedom is known as the Tao, which is translated as the Way. The Tao is so subtle that you can look right at it and miss it if you are not paying attention. When you do finally find it, you will realize that it was right in front of you the whole time. It is a very difficult thing to teach or explain, and it often ends up masked in mystical words despite its simplicity. Many continue to search when it is right there. It is there between all extremes, hot and cold, feminine and masculine, yin and yang. The Tao is a balance. It is known as the middle. To find it, you must look at what lies between two extremes. That is a good place. A place of moderation untouched by excesses. A place that is hard to get regularly in life. You must work towards applying the Tao to all parts of your life. A moderation that makes room for all other things on each side. It is hollow and empty, remaining calm while everything swirls around it, like the center of a hurricane. When you move in the Tao, life becomes simple as you are unswayed, simply allowing things to happen and not following the extremities. 
Following the Tao will lead you to God. There are so many teachings and concepts about God, however, these all end up being reflections of the culture they stem from. The path to God, luckily, is within us. It is found through the practices of finding and claiming the seat in the center of our consciousness. At the point where you can allow yourself to drift upwards. God is the greatest consciousness from which all consciousness is born, and the height of spiritual understanding is to merge back with the consciousness of God. In that place, the individual consciousness joins the universal oneness. This merge can be seen in several studies, like the Gospel of John in the Bible says, that they all may be one, as thou, the Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. This is also seen in the Hindu Vedas, the Jewish Kabbalah, and written by the great Sufi mystic poet. The height of all spiritual endeavors is to merge with God. God is not judgmental, as many believe, but in fact all accepting and loving, awaiting you to join Him and become part of the universal oneness. Conclusion The cares of life should not weigh you down as they are not for you to control, but only to experience. You cannot control the external, but only what is within you, therefore the answer to all questions in life is not outside of you, but within you. It is within yourself that you will find peace and even God. Try this, when you face issues and problems that appear bigger than you, don't run or try to avoid the problem and protect yourself as fear would have you do. Instead, feel peace and tackle the problem within you, that is your fear. This will allow you to experience the issue and learn from it. This is how you grow.